So we're out of London today, out here. The start of the walk today is at Gerrard's Cross and we're going to walk up the road for about a mile and a half to Charlton St Peter to pick up the South Bucks Way and that's what we're following today. We're going to follow the South Bucks Way. Let's see how far we get really. I don't want to set any kind of uh, parameters on today or expectations. It's uh, one o'clock, sunset today is at 7.45. Got loads of really big houses along the road here, Gerrard's Cross. Synonymous with kind of like the wealthy fringes of London. South Bucks Way is I think in total about 22 miles long. I'll put the correct distance here. And it starts uh, on the canal down there near Denham. And I actually walked that section uh, two years ago from Denham up to Charfin St Peter. So I was going to repeat it again today but there's not really enough time so I thought I would uh, go back to the point at which I left the South Bucks Way up at Charfin St Peter. And I saw that stretch on the map that day and it looked uh, majestic going, essentially following the, the River Misbourne up towards Amersham, then on to um, Great Missingdon. And it starts, or in my case, would end at um, Coombe Hill, which is near Wendover. I'm not entirely sure we'll get as far as that today with the amount of time and light, but I think it's gonna be a delightful walk no matter where we end up. I love the way uh, on the sign there for Charles and Peter they go Doomsday Book Village AD 1086. Now going along Lower Road, Charles and Peter, and hopefully we'll pick up the South Bucks Way just a little bit further along this road here. This is interesting. It looks like the uh, the road here at Charles and Peter is closed to traffic. The last time I was here, which I think was August 2018, I sat down here with some chips and a can of fizzy drink and then I headed up to Gold Hill and ended that walk at Sear Green. But I looked at the South Bucks Way heading towards Amersham and I thought, that looks great. I'll do that another day. It's taken me two years. First things first though, a bit of lunch from the co-op on this bench by the church. We'll just check the map. So I'm a bit concerned if it's any signage yet, but so I'm pretty sure this is the South Bucks Way here, running up beside the church. This is called Vic Wharton Bridge, dedicated to the memory of Vic Wood. President of the Children Society. This is a public footpath. I'm not entirely sure if it's the South Bucks Way though. It was interesting to see a number of people sort of milling around at that point near the church where there was the signs and it's not one family that were there for about 10 minutes just looking at the signs and looking around. I think there's a few people out on the South Bucks Way today doing a little bank holiday family walk which is always nice to see. When I walked the Chess Valley Way back in I think it was February wasn't it? Quite a lot of people were out there that day as well. Chilterns is a great place to walk. Here we go some information walks in the Misbourne Valley See, makes its confluence with the Colne down at Denham. And we're following it for quite a long way today. Lovely bit of uh, municipal architecture over there. I love that font. This is sort of synonymous with like the, like the 1960s, isn't it? And we are down, uh, I'll pop an arrow in there. Just gone past the church and past the footbridge. So we hopefully we're on track. So I think I have to go across this recreation ground here. A little bit concerning there hasn't been any South Bucks Way signage, plenty of footpath signage, but... Although this clearly follows the route on the map, you're never sure you're actually on the right path until you see a sign that says South Bucks Way. 
So at the moment there's that little seed of doubt in my mind that I am going the right way. Given my history of, you know, getting lost and going the wrong way, it's a fairly reasonable assumption to make. Now, it still just says public footpath. It's a beautiful day now. Yes, and here we have it. South Bucks Way signage. It probably was back there as well, actually. I probably just didn't read the sign properly. So this is only really my third proper trip out of London in the last six months. Of course, they've all been condensed <laughs> into the last month. And it's so good actually, a really strong urge today to get out here. Absolutely fantastic, glorious terrain out here and very close to London. This is a great little footpath here with the trees arcing over to make a tunnel. So the footpath goes along the side of Chaffin and St Giles Church. This is a beautiful old church here. You can see it's built from flints there, which is a characteristic of the Chilterns. The Chilterns is littered with ancient churches dating back to like the 11th, 12th century. Confirmation that it's the South Bucks Way. The path takes us through this old timber framed building. Trail for St Giles High Street. And I think the uh, South Box Way just continues on the other side of the road here. It's a really pretty little village, isn't it? These are all places that I associate with uh, going to cricket matches with my dad when he played for Woburn Narcovians, and we play all these other little Chilton's villages, Charlton St Giles, Charlton St Peter, etc. Denham. And uh, here is the continuation of the South Bucks Way down this uh, gravel track here. Our first encounter with some Chilterns woodland. I should have realised this big white arrow was telling me something. Instead of getting seduced by that path up there, which was delightful, this is actually the way I've got to go. Luckily I didn't go too far. Going past some really quite charming Chilton's cottages here, along a little lane. I must say, I really like that footpath sign at the top of this post. I've not seen one of those before. When you walk through this area and you see these really lovely, cute little villages, and the beautiful cottages. This used to be really the land of kind of uh, 60s and 70s television presenters, or quite famous people, and Rolf Harris, I mean, a bit further along down the Thames, Dave Allen, Roald Dahl lives not far away from here. I mean, I know a lot of this because my dad was a gardener, so they'd often end up doing people's gardens, like uh, Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. Again, different part of the Chilterns out of Radnage. Even so, same part of the same kind of... Uh, district and going back it's kind of the land of film directors and film stars from like the 40s and 50s because you had film studios out here at Denham, I think Gerrard's Cross out of studios, Beaconsfield Studios which is now the National School of Film and Television so you had kind of, I mean Dirk Bogart lived out here at one point. That was really funny, just walking down this path here, this fellow was walking the other way and he just went Leighton Stone. <laughs> I see your blogs every now and again. You're a bit off the beaten track, aren't you? We had a nice conversation. Lovely fella. John, nice to meet you, John. Lovely to bump onto you on this footpath here. <laughs> Thanks for saying hello. Always great to meet people who watch the videos when I'm out actually making a video. So 
when I used to go walking in the Chilterns with my dad when I was a kid, these are the kind of nut stems that he would cut and make uh, swords for me and spears and bows and arrows that I would play with and would horrify my mum. It's uh, the uh, Super 8 footage here of my dad doing just such a thing when we walked in Wickham. Raise the pylons. I'm surprised no one's done a kind of modern folk horror thing involving pylons in the countryside. I'm thinking kind of like an electric wicker man. On the subject of folk horror, I haven't really explored this much, but it's just going through my head, so I thought I'd share it with you. Is it, I, I've never really been uh, down with the whole folk horror thing, really. I'll tell you why as well. To me, having grown up in this kind of territory, it comes across as a kind of like city person's fear of the countryside and a Christian's fear of paganism. And when I first really sort of looked at the Wicker Man through my <laughs> sort of adult eyes, I thought that's like part of the stigmatisation of paganism and witchcraft as being bad and evil and all of those things. And folk horror as an idea seems to tune into that. Now, I may have got that completely wrong. And I know it kind of crosses over with hauntology, which I was talking about earlier on. And that's initially why I was a little bit skeptical about hauntology, until I realized actually, it's not really about, <laughs> I don't think it's really about folk horror at all. I think it's a lot more to do with this idea of the lost futures really, rather than sort of ghosts and the weird and the uncanny in the landscape. That's just for me. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts because I know probably there's a few people that watch these videos that are quite into the whole folk horror thing. See, I associate this landscape and I associate the countryside as being a very benign place. I see kind of paganism and witchcraft as being a celebration of the landscape and of the essential elements not burning people in <laughs> Wicker Man, you know. <laughs> anyway, that's just, that's just me. So they're laying a new water main across the fields here. Makes for quite a dramatic landscape, doesn't it? So it's about half past three, and I haven't got an enormous distance to go to get to Amersham. <laughs> saying that because I, I don't know how far it is, but it doesn't look too far. I'm walking quite quickly because I'm keen to try and get at least as close as I can to Coombe Hill in Wendover because it's a very strong vantage point. It's a big hill. You've got a crossing of the Icknield Way and the Ridgeway through there. So it would be wonderful to be up there for sunset if I can. I don't know how realistic it is, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Although the Chilterns isn't particularly a fashionable place to come these days, in the kind of 20s and 30s and 40s, it was a very popular destination for Londoners to head out for a Sunday walk or a weekend walk. A lot of the, uh, my favorite walking guides really do at least include one Chilterns walk in them. In fact, one of my favorite walking guides is a book called Chilterns Footpaths by Anne Ann Dixon. It covers a range of walks around the Chilterns, particularly around High Wycombe and the territory where I grew up. The River Misbourne has been a kind of shadow presence on this walk. It's just there, running along the, uh, the bottom of this field. There's a tree line there, just there. This is a fantastic bit of late summer sun. So this is a real treat. I love these last days of summer when the, the heat is benign and it doesn't burn. And you know each sunny, summery day could be the last until spring. Always happy to see these guys. In this case, next to a Slightly strange building site here, lots of tubes and stuff. I wonder if this is part of the water treatment works they're doing. Past these old cottages here. I think we've got a little bit of road walking up ahead. 
Amersham is one of the kind of principal towns of Buckinghamshire. You can see three of the others on that uh, sign there, Beaconsfield, Aylesbury, Wickham. And of course, you've also got Marlow and Slough as well. So we are here, just walking into Amersham Old Town. And then we're going to walk along the road before breaking back out into the fields. The Chilterns generally have strong links to religious non-conformism, but Amersham particularly was the scene of one of the notorious, most notorious scenes in the history of this area, and it's links to rebelling against church authority. It was in Amersham in the 1500s that seven Lollards were burnt at the stake. And I've been sort of fascinated by the Lollard heresy, partly because it's a you could link it to modern ideas of the rejection of uh, authority. You know, it was the idea that no one could stand between man and God. Something that the, uh, the church found <laughs> deep, deeply objectionable. church over there is 13th century. This is the old market. This is the King's Arms Hotel. These appear to be some arms houses. Lots of pubs in Amersham. So the Misbourne is running just down there, beneath that rose, and then behind these cottages. So back onto the footpath and hopefully back into the fields as well. Well, the South Bucks Way seems to be pointing us up here into Chardelot's house. Around the side of Amersham Cricket Club. I've got vague recollections of coming here for cricket matches. I think it's a very short boundary on one side. Is this a Nissan hut? It's got a kind of Nissan hut shape to it, isn't it? So growing up, all my summer weekends were spent in places like this. First coming and watching my dad. Then from about the age of 13 or 14 actually playing for various men's teams. The second 11 and the third 11. A really beautiful lake out here. Look at this, it's gorgeous. So I guess that must be Shardalow's house up there. That is quite an impressive pile, isn't it? With an incredible view over the Valley of the Misborn. This is really beautiful here. It's actually farmland that we're walking across. progress along this delightful little country lane. It's uh, just after five o'clock I think. So we're now in Little Missenden. Here's the village hall. I wonder what goes on in Little Missenden Village Hall. I'm sure you uh, folk horror enthusiasts have your own ideas. Well, there's the pub. I was actually tempted to go into but it appears to be closed which is a shame. A gap in the hedge and an invitation to continue our walk through here, back across the fields. Oh, this is lovely. Now along Penfold Lane, if you've been following this on a map. There's the South Bucks Way signs over there, pointing us around the edge of this field. The sound of a cricket match on the side of this hedge. 
just checked the map and um, it crosses two ordnance survey maps, which you know it's a long walk when you're going on two ordnance survey maps. And with my map reading skills, that's double the jeopardy. But um, it does look like there's still quite some distance to go to get to Coombe Hill. And of course, at some point, we're going to have to go uphill. So, fingers crossed that we can get there for sunset. Who knows? I think at the moment, I put it at 50 50. We've got about an how long have we got? We've got about two hours of light, so. So, a bit of a climb up into this ridge here. And those pylons are heading in the direction of uh, High Wycombe, the town of my birth. But we're going, uh, we're going this way in the opposite direction, heading further north. I'm having one of those moments where I'm wondering whether I'm going the right way or not. Oh my God, just as I say that, look. <laughs> Here's the footpath leading across the field. So I'm no longer having a moment <laughs> where I feel like I might be going the wrong way. I lost the faith in following the map around the edge of that field because I thought it's just going down to that wood. So I came around and then I had the same dilemma. I had to come down this hill here thinking, going to that wood, that can't be right. But no, we're going up here. Sometimes it's easy to forget to look back the way you just walked. It's a glorious view back through there, isn't it? Back through the trees. I think only a short distance because I think we're going to be walking along a road again soon. So it's uh, nearly six o'clock. It's five to six. And I've walked 13.2 miles, which is a lot further than I thought. So my estimate of 16 miles from um, Gerald's Cross to Coombe Hill was, a, I think it's quite out. But let's keep going. So now we follow the South Bucks way through Little Kings Hill. Great little bit of history about, uh, about the area, about Little Missenden. Apparently the Paris church is over a thousand years old and has wall paintings dating from the 13th century. Of course wall paintings on English churches are very rare due to the Reformation and the church itself dates from Saxon times. The question is, where is it? South Bucks Way, excellent. Taking us along the side of the football pitch and I think I've played here. I seem to think I played here and scored a goal from memory. I think it was in that goal down there. I remember it because I didn't score many goals playing as a fullback. Oh, look at this delightful little path that opens up off a private road leading us onwards. Back out into the fields, moving into the evening now. Under the railway bridge here, which carries the Chiltern line. So it's just after 6.30. Sunset, I think, is at 7.45. I think it's dark pretty quickly after that now. So I've really got a, an hour at the most to get to Coombe Hill if I want to get to the end of the South Bucks Way. I don't know if it's possible or not, but I'm gonna give it my best shot, keep going. It does feel like I've still got um, quite a long way to go. When I look at the map, I've changed ordnance survey maps now. And you get a sense how long it takes to cover that terrain and I think an hour is very ambitious however it looks like there's some great hills up there anyway so it'll be wherever we end up today it's going to be lovely. I guess this must be a product of the Misborn. This is called Warren Water and this is Great Kings Hill and we're just passing through the village quite quickly. So there's a little museum here which would be lovely to visit one day. That's never good news, is it? Footpath diversion. I find it hard enough as it is when they're going the right way. Oh well, let's see. This area is called Mobwell. Wow, 
What a beautiful field. Wow, what a really glorious field with the light breaking through over the trees. Lighting up a kind of clear patch of sky over there in the direction that I'm walking. Moments like this actually now, you feel like this is the walk, regardless of how far along I get. I don't think I'm going to reach Coombe Hill. You never know, miracles might happen. <laughs> but it doesn't matter at this stage. It's the moments like this which really encapsulate the experience and kind of illuminate the day. Very friendly cows there. The Black Horse pub looks closed. It's up for lease. Somebody take it on. And the footpath takes us beside Town End Farm. Back under the railway bridge that carries the Chiltern line between Marylebone and the Chilterns. so beautiful. I'm so glad I made it this far. I didn't think I would get much beyond Amersham to be honest. Half an hour till sunset. No finer thing than walking across a field into the sunset. It was a steep climb up into this wood. I hope I get out of the wood before the light goes. It'd be nice to see a bit of the sunset from the hills. Oh, <laughs> I suppose it's inevitable really when you look at the map. I mean, it's just the Chiltern Hills after all. Sometimes walking's a bit like uh, philosophy. It's a good metaphor for life. Paths and roads and junctions and decision points etc. And uh, I think I've, <laughs> I've kind of lost the South Box Way somehow. I've lost the path. The signpost is pointing it down there towards the road but I think that's heading in the other direction. So somewhere, I don't know, I'm a bit confused to be honest with you because I was on the path that's come up to here I was turning towards the bottom of the hill and the road and back to Great Missenden. So it's 15 minutes to sunset. You can see the sky's already turning lovely and gold and the sun's on the other side of that hill. So I think I might just accept that maybe my uh, route along the South Bucks Way has ended. And uh, you know what? And I'll just enjoy the sunset from this field here, this beautiful place. It's brought me to this vantage point and then I should enjoy it and then go down and find the road to Wendover or maybe actually back to Great Missenden. <laughs> so uh, that leaves Coombe Hill for another day. And of course it's on the Ridgeway and the Ridgeway is one of my long-term ambitions to walk the Ridgeway. So at least I won't have been there before when I, when I go on the Ridgeway it will be the first time. It's been a cracking walk. Obviously it's not over yet, <laughs> but it's the end of the South Bucks Way for me in this field here. I think I can see where I went wrong actually. See here, when I crossed over from the pub, I went under the railway line. I'm pretty sure I took the right path across the field there, but I think I must have taken this footpath here. Which is, and then up to that farm, and then I turned right into the wood and came out over there. Whereas I would have, I don't really, <laughs> I would have come up at the bottom of this field here and come directly up. So it wouldn't make much difference. Well, look at this circle of mushrooms here. Now, I'm no mushroom connoisseur, so I don't know what these are and whether they're edible. I'm sure people are gonna berate me for not picking them and taking them home. It's like a magic circle, isn't it? Look at that. So I'm just gonna walk back down the field, ironically along the South Bucks Way, <laughs> just down to the road there, and then I'm gonna walk along the road back to Great Missenden and get the train back into London from there. Normally I would think this is a good place for me to sign off the walk, but I think a few people have said, you know, what happens when you sign off in the middle of a field? 
how do you get home? So I'll show a little bit of my uh, walk back to the station because who knows, <laughs> there might still be a bit of adventure to be had along the way. Yes, this is the point I went wrong. I went that way, which was a lovely field, and then I went up to the right through that wood. I was actually I should have turned here and then left. Back under the, the railway line, that I'll be on that railway line soon. And now I'm going to get over the road. I don't think I'm going to walk along the road. I think I'm going to walk back the way I came. So there's little fields around the edge of Great Missenden. Very nicer into the walk than road walking it. So just uh, one last field to go through, then we're back in Great Kings Hill. It's just about to get dark, so I thought I would do my sign off now. And thank you for joining me on this beautiful walk along the South Bucks Way. What a treat! We actually got much further than I ever thought. I would have been happy to get to Amersham, and that's quite that's sort of two and a half, three hours ago. Three hours ago, at least. So it's been a real treat for me to get out here today. Really needed it. Just got to go through this gate here. And a big thank you also to my supporters on Patreon, the fellow travellers and radical ramblers. And as ever, <laughs> I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. And I'll just show you the rest of the journey uh, as the credits play out as we go through Great Missenden Village and down to the station. A tree in distress, save me.